Okay, welcome back to week four, guys. Uh, today, um, we're going to take what we've been doing the first couple weeks, three weeks of summer, and now see if you can actually do something worthwhile with it. Um, instead of just being sort of given everything and just asked to solve, 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 now you have to set up your own stuff and be able to solve. And this is why the math becomes useful. <laughs> this is where it becomes useful. This is also very difficult for some people, okay? So uh, for some of you, this might be the week that you dread. But for some of you, you're going to be really good at interpreting it um, because you have to be able to, to read well. Um, so here you're going to have to be able to, to take written descriptions, set up your own equation, and sometimes even solve. And not every time, but sometimes. So let me read this if you can't read my writing. Take written descriptions, set up your own equation, and solve. So it's doing everything you've done the last two weeks, but now on your own, okay? Um, interpreting things on your own. Before we jump right into just uh, how to do that, we're going to talk vocab because there are some words that when you're reading something or somebody's describing something to you, specific words mean specific things. Uh, so for instance, if somebody asks you to combine two numbers, uh, a lot of times combining is the same thing as adding, okay? Um, another word that you might see is the sum the sum of two numbers, that also means addition. And um, as we see more, we'll come back and add to our chart. Uh, but I'm just doing all the ones I can think of off the top of my head right now. Um, subtraction, um, the word difference shows up when you're talking about subtract subtraction. Um, also less than, you might see something is less than, blah, blah, blah. Something over here might say more than. Okay, so more than and less than, those are going to be your add and subtract, okay? Um, all right, so multiplication. Let's think of some words. You may be able to think of some as well. Can you think of something you've seen in a word problem that means to multiply? Well, sometimes you'll actually see the word times. Like it'll say, this is something times greater than something else. And if you actually see the word times, it is multiplication. Um, another thing you might see is product. The product of two numbers um, always tells you to multiply. Um, what else do you see for multiplication? Mm -mm. Well, I can't think of anything, so if I do later, we'll come back and add it. Um, division. Okay, so for division, um, this one's kind of tricky because, you know, sometimes it will say divide. It really will say to divide. Um, but a lot of times it's very vague with division. Um, whenever I know immediately that it's a division problem is whenever they are talking about um, breaking something into groups. So we'll just call it like grouping. If you see a problem, talk about like we're going to group this many muffins uh, into this many people, you know. Uh, when you notice you're doing groups, um, that is the same thing as dividing, but the words that they use are sometimes weird. So we'll just have to see, you know, exactly how that's written to us. Another thing to keep in mind with division is you might see the word ratio or you, um, that's, that's ration, <laughs> you might see the word ratio. Um, you also might see um, the word proportion. These are all division. Uh, you might, you know, I also want to remind you that a fraction is division as well. So these um, aren't necessarily words you'll see, but if, if this is what your brain is thinking, you are technically doing division, okay? Now, um, an equation versus an expression, you're going to be asked to do both, everybody, okay? An equation has an equal sign. That's the difference. If you find yourself setting it equal and solving it to something and you, you write that equals, that is an equation. An expression is just an expression. It, it's something that isn't solved, okay? Isn't solved. It's just written out. So an expression might be um, if I say 
um, I might say like this number is twice as much as seven. Okay, so if I say there's a number twice as much as seven, then that's an expression. But if I add to that and say, hey, here's a number that's twice as much as seven and it's equal to 12, then I've turned it into an equation. So a lot of times um, it's gonna be missing the word equals. An expression um, is often mi missing another word too, um, the word is. If you see the word is, that's the same as equals, is equals. So you'll see these words if it's an equation. And if it's an expression, these will be missing. You won't see any of those words right there, okay? All right, now what about an inequality? Well, we've done inequalities. That was actually our last week. So if you see things like um, at most, or at least, and you'll usually see the word is in front of it, is at most, is at least. Um, that tells you we're not gonna put an equal sign, okay? We're gonna put like, is at most would be like that, is at least would be greater than or equal to. So those are symbols we would have to know to put into our equation if we see this terminology. These will be the trickiest for for most people, honestly, is um, when you see that, you're just going to put an equal sign and it'll be wrong. You'll need to put that symbol instead. Okay, so there's our vocab lesson. Now it's time for example so we can actually practice this. Guys, there's just a lot of reading and interpreting and logic that goes into this. I can't give you one specific thing to do every single time and it's going to work. You have to think. You have to be able to think. And don't get mad like, oh, she didn't give us a rule exactly. I'm going to do the best I can to guide you, but you have to think, okay? So um, let's read them a couple of times and then try to put them, you know, I'll tell you my, the way I do this, okay? Um, three times the number Q is less than 42. Three times the number Q is less than 42, okay? This is going to probably be... Um, an expression because it didn't ask me to find anything it didn't tell me what the number is exactly equal to um, because it didn't say is the number 42 it said that it was less than 42 so this is where it gets kind of tricky now this this right here the first thing is the number Q so Q is my variable and it does say three times that number Q. So when I read three times the number Q, if you look above, times means multiply. So I'm going to write three Q. Now if you want to put the little time symbol between them, you can. But it's just a three Q. That's the same thing. And it says that this is less than 42. So this is less than 42. That doesn't mean... Um, that doesn't mean to put an equal sign, but instead, what could we do? Think about it just a second before I give it to you. Three times the number Q is less than 42. Not an equals, but a less than sign, and then 42, okay? So we don't have an equation, we have an inequality. Now, it did not tell me to solve um, so sometimes you just leave it like that. If you want to solve it, then you could just divide by three, divide by three, and we could have our answer, but I just want to work on the setup, okay? So right here, we're just really doing the setup, unless it tells me find the number, okay? So here's the setup for that. All right, hopefully that made sense. Um, you look for keywords, multiply, less than, and you go from there. The product of five and half of R is 15, okay? So I see the word product, and so product to me means multiply, so it's the product of what? The, the product of five and half of R, okay? So if I need to take half of R, then I'm gonna cut R in half. So I'm either gonna put R over two, 
or I could say one half times r, either one. But since it's the product of these two different things, half of r, so the product of five and half of r, I need to write them as a multiply, okay? Now the word is, anytime I see the word is in a problem, um, if there's not any words after it, like in this one, is means equals, okay? And then I can put my 15. So here was the product of two things, and it is equal to 15. Now, it doesn't say to solve for r. We're just working on the setup. So this is how I would set this one up. Now, for our last one, um, I usually draw a picture with geometry, not going to lie. And right here, it's talking about a square. So I'm going to draw the square. And it says that the sides of that square are labeled as s plus 3. And for some reason, there's all kinds of extra notation there. Let's do that. There we go. Okay. So if the square is s plus 3, then remember a square is the same on all the sides. And I'm going to go ahead and label that just because I don't really know what this wants me to do yet, but why not label it to make it easier? Now the next sentence says if the perimeter is 52. Perimeter. Let's think about what perimeter is, everybody. Perimeter on a shape is, is how you measure all the way around the shape. So if I need to go around the shape, that means I'm combining all four sides. And if we need to combine the sides, the word combine means to add. So if we're doing perimeter, I really do need to add all of these together. Okay, so you can either write it out as s plus 3 plus s plus 3 plus s plus 3 plus s plus 3. You can write all of that out if you want. I'm just going to add it by actually looking at this and adding them sort of in my head. Um, when I do this, I just look at combining like terms. So how many s's do I have? Well, I have one s here one s here, one s here, and one s here. So I have a total of one, two, three, four s's plus how many positive threes do I have? Three, six, nine, twelve. So I just added up all the sides to do perimeter. Four s plus twelve and it says that it is, so remember the word is is equals, fifty-two. So I just set up my equation. 4s plus 12, that's, the, um, that's combining all four sides, and that is equal to 52. And then it says to find the length of each side. So this one does want me to keep going, and it wants me to actually find something. So to find the length of each side, um, I'm first going to have to solve this. So let me start by subtracting 12 trying to get that s by itself just because I don't know what else to do. 52 minus 12, that would be a 40. Now I divide both sides by 4 and I get 10. So it didn't say find s, did it? It said find the length of each side. Well I just found out that my s is 10, so if I look back at my picture I can choose a side, take my s, plug it back in, and then I'll know that it's 10 plus 3. So each side is 13 units long. And that's what the question wanted me to find. So this is what it wants from you guys. It wants you to be able to read something and interpret it and actually solve. So um, you'll see a lot of this in algebra next year and a lot of just setting it up. Set it up, leave it alone. And then sometimes it's set it up and actually solve it. So that's as many examples as I have for you because every example is different. Um, but I'm going to let you go ahead and try the practice. And this may be the one video where you do need to watch the entire solution video just to make sure that you're thinking about things the right way. And, um, and then we can, of course, work on it if you're doing the tutorial with me. You can ask as many questions as you like. So good luck to you. Take your time, underline, circle, uh, that usually helps draw a picture. And good luck to you.